since we uh, got to be right back here tomorrow, I'm going to try to get through this lesson as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, don't have a lot of scripture, but it's going to be a lot of reading. So this is one of them lessons where if you want to follow up on it, and you, if you're not going to buy the DVD or the CD, then you're going to have to take some notes. So the, the title of today's lesson is simply The Rise and Fall of the Gentile Dynasty. The Rise and Fall of the Gentile Dynasty. And the reason why a lesson like this is necessary is because for, for some people to, to, to be convicted about this word of God, they have to know all that's going on. Now, I can't teach you all that's going on, but I can teach you what I do understand and what I know. And this, <clears throat> this Gentile dynasty came into effect because of Israel not fulfilling their duties before the Lord. But I didn't want to make it a long lesson, so I'm not going to put that part in it. But I'm pretty sure you got that from the black history lesson a couple months ago. <clears throat> so this is the result. This is the fallout. This is the aftermath of Israel not doing her job. <clears throat> I hope everybody settled down by now. Okay, we're going to open this up in Daniel's the second chapter. Daniel's chapter 2. So this... This first Gentile uh, ruler, you know, he, he had a dream. The Lord was showing him something. And it troubled him, and he, needed, he wanted to know what it meant. But he had to go to the captives of Judah to find out what the dream meant. So we're in Daniel's the second chapter. We're going to skip through this because we don't want to read it all. Uh, we're going to start at verse 1. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 1. If y'all want to be here all day, then I can wait for y'all to find it, but I'm pretty sure y'all know where Daniel's at. 2 and 1, go ahead. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Mm -hmm. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dream. Go ahead. So they came and stood before the king, and the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. So now he wanted to know this dream. He said his spirit was troubled. He was, he was, he was wondering what this dream meant. We're not going to read all of it, but... He went to these guys instead of going to the priest of God to tell him what this dream meant. But they didn't have the answer for him. But we're going to skip down to verse 25. Verse 25, go ahead and read. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste mm -hmm. and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. But first he went to kill Daniel and his, and his, uh, and his partners. But Daniel said, I will give the king an answer. But he gave it to him by the word of God. Go ahead and read, brother. 26. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen? So he called Daniel Belteshazzar, but that's because Daniel was in captivity. So when they, when they take you into captivity, they always give you somebody else's name, not your own name. Go ahead. And the interpretation thereof, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot... The wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers showing to the king. He wasn't asking them a question. He was making a statement. He was telling, them, telling him that these people cannot do this. They don't have the ability or the autonomy to show unto the king the interpretation of this dream. He wasn't asking them a question. He was telling him they can't do it. Go ahead and read. But there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets mm -hmm. and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. So he's talking about in the latter days. But he's going to give them the whole thing. Was that, that, was that the end of that verse? Uh-uh. Go ahead and finish. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. So now he's going to break down the dream to him. Skip down to verse 36. Verse 36. Go ahead. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Mm -hmm. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the, God of heaven, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom power and strength and glory. So it's the God of heaven that gave him this kingdom. Strength, power, and glory. Because the Lord said, he set him, he set him king and he taken down. But go ahead and read. 
And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and, he, and hath made thee ruler over them all. So now he, he said that he gave all this into the, king, the hands of Nebuchadnezzar the king. He said that he was going to rule over them all. He said, wherever the, wherever the fowls of the, air, uh, the, the heavens uh, uh, dwell, right, and, and, and men dwell, he's ruling over this. That's the whole world, really. Go ahead and read. Thou art this head of gold. So now this, this is the first, the beginning of this Gentile dynasty is the Babylonian Empire because Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon and he started to conquer the world and he was, he was uh, called this head of gold. He was, the, he was the beginning of it. Go ahead and read. 39. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. That is the Medo-Persian Empire. Go ahead. And another third kingdom of brass. That's the Greek empire. Which shall bear rule over all the earth. Mm -hmm. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. So now, this is the kingdom that we're under right now, the, the, Ro the Roman Empire. But all these was a part of the same body, the head of gold the arms and, and, and breast of, of uh, silver and, the, and the, the middle part of brass, you know, and the, and the feet and stuff of uh, iron and clay. Is that, that, was, that was the end of verse 40? Yes, sir. So I want you to put a, a marker here in Daniel so we're going to be in and out of it. So keep your marker there. But we, we finna go right into the, uh, the fifth chapter of Daniel's now. Because we got we to break down what all these things are. Daniel chapter 5. Verse, uh, verse 1, Daniel 5 and 1. Go ahead and read. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem. So now this is, this is Nebuchadnezzar's uh, son or grandson, according to history, is one or the other. But... This is when the next empire came into power. When this guy was ruling over the, the Babylonian Empire, he, he disrespected the Lord, the Lord took it from him. Go ahead and read. That the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. Go ahead. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. So now they praised all, all these pagan gods. They used the vessels that came out of the house of God to praise pagan gods, which to celebrate pagan gods. How disrespectful can you be? But they, they, they are so disrespectful. They, they disrespectful like that right now today. Right now today, they will take sacred things and use them for they, for, to, to worship their pagan gods. If you, if you start watching some educational stuff, you'll see like over there under, under that, that place that over there in Rome, they even probably got the, the Ark of the Covenant. They got sacred things over there. But if you read history, you'll find out that, that these Gentiles took everything from Israel. What verse? Five. Go ahead. <laughs> In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Mm -hmm. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed. So look, he, he started to look different then. He was afraid. He was terrified, really. Go ahead. And his <laughs> thoughts troubled him mm -hmm. so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. Now, you know, you got to be real scared when you... When your bowels loosen up and your knees knock, you got to be real terrified. You got to be at the point you finish, you think you about to die a horrible death. So he was afraid. Go ahead. Seven. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. So he wanted to know what this meant so bad that he said, look, I will make you rich and make you the third ruler in the kingdom. Just tell me what this message says. Because 
it was, it was written in a, different, a language that he didn't understand. <clears throat> but he called these, these pagan priests to answer. They couldn't answer. So he had to call the captives again. Skip down to verse 17. Go ahead. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself and give, the, and give thy rewards to another. See, this is how the servant of God is supposed to be. We ain't supposed to be taking gifts to do, the, to, to do our job. We're supposed to just do it because it's our job to do it and can't nobody else do it. Continue to read. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. Go ahead. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would he slew. And whom he would, he kept alive. And whom he would, he set up. And whom he would, he put down. So this is, this is by the power that the Lord gave him. So Nebuchadnezzar was able to do all these things by the power of the Lord. Because see, it's all by the power of the Lord. Even Satan operated by the power of the Lord. He can't do nothing on his own, but he do what the, what the Lord allowed him to do. Skip down to 22 and go ahead. And thou his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart. Though thou knewest all this. So it don't matter if you're a Gentile or not. You got to humble yourself before the Lord. It don't matter where you come from. It don't matter who your ancestors are. You got to humble yourself before the Lord. Because he, he is the God of the whole earth. Go ahead and read. 23. But has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee. And thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. Say, look, you took my stuff. And that's the crazy. This was mine. Say, look, I, I'm passing sentence on you now. Go ahead. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Say, look, the God in whom controls the breath of life, and, and who allows you to live, he said, you have not glorified him, the one who, who sustains your life. See, not only do these people have a problem with it, but Israel as a whole has a problem with glorifying God. They want to glorify somebody else's God and not their own. They want to disrespect the God that gave them the breath of life and praise somebody else's God. You got these guys running around talking about, wearing shirts talking about gay is the new black. Don't you know that they're telling you that skip the God of Israel? We're going to do what we want to do? And they're praise, they praising some other God? And all pagan gods, they all Satan. They all go right back to Satan. So they're saying that we're going to praise Satan instead of praising the, the Lord that gave us the breath of life. He's going to destroy them. Where we at? Verse 24. Let me not get angry talking about that stuff. Verse 24, go ahead. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mm -hmm. mene, tikel, a parson. Go ahead. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Say, look, the Lord has set an end to your boundaries. Your boundaries of life, the Lord has set an end to it. Go ahead. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Because you did not glorify God. He said, I've, I've checked you out, and you lacking, partner. Go ahead. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Mm -hmm. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. So now he said, look, your kingdom is finished, you finished, and I'm going to give this kingdom to the Medes and the Persians. That, that was the second empire that came up, the Medes and the Persians. Continue to read. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. Mm -hmm. And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. So now Darius the Mede took the kingdom. There ain't a whole lot of history on Darius the Mede, but he took the kingdom. So now this is the, the beginning of the Medo-Persian empire. Let's continue. Let's go into the, uh, the eighth chapter of Daniel.
Pick it up at verse 1. 8 and 1, go ahead. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at, fir at the first. Mm -hmm. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Uli. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. Mm -hmm. And the higher came up last. So now this, he having this, he's still under this guy that the Lord said, passed sentence on. It was still under his kingdom. But he's, he's seeing a vision of what's about to come after this Medo-Persian, I mean, uh, after this empire, how this Medo-Persian empire is going to be set up and how it's going to go down. Go ahead and read. Four. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Now that's the Medo-Persian empire. And the, 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 uh, the horns represent, the, uh, one represents the Medes and one represents the Persians. The, and the, and the, and the uh, high one came up last. But that's for another lesson. Go ahead and read. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, mm -hmm. but he did according to his will and became great. So this, this, this Medo-Persian Empire became great. They, they became so great that they ruled for almost 500 years, and they didn't have anybody to challenge them. Go ahead and read. And as I was considering, behold, and he go came from the west on the face of the whole earth mm -hmm. and touched not the ground. So they was moving so fast. This Alexander the Great, he moved so fast, he conquered so fast that Persia couldn't get ready for him. So he touched not the ground. That's just, that's just telling me that's how fast he was moving. Go ahead and read. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. That's the king, Alexander. Go ahead. And he came to the ram that had two horns which I had seen standing before the river, mm -hmm. and ran unto him in the fury of his power. So he ran unto him because Greece was always trying to get from under, the, under the, uh, the, the thumb of Persia. It took them a long time. They lost a lot of lives, so they was angry about this thing. Go ahead and read. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with cola against him and smote the ram. So he was moved with anger against him, and he, he smote the ram. Go ahead and break his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. So, so now the, the kingdom, it, it went from the Medo-Persians to the Greeks. Go ahead and read. Therefore, the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. So and, now, go ahead. And for it came up for notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. So for it, for, the, for, for Alexander, when he died, four of his generals stood up, and they divided the kingdom into, into four parts, but it was still the, the, the kingdom of the Greeks, but they divided it into four parts. Skip down to verse 20. Go ahead. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia, mm -hmm. and the rough goat is the king of Grecia. Go ahead. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. That's Alexander the Great. Go ahead and read. Now that being broken, where it where is four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. Go ahead. And in the latter time of their kingdom. When the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding, dark sentences shall stand up. So now, this is at the end of the Greek Empire come in the Roman Empire. But now, if we, as we read in the, in the second chapter, this, this, uh, uh, all these, these kingdoms was a part of the same body, the Gentile dynasty. So after this Greek Empire, it said a, a king of fierce kind is going to stand up. And these Romans, they right, right now today, they fierce. Just watch the news. They ain't just doing it here in America. But you done with that? Mm -hmm. So yes, what we're going to do is go into this uh, history book. It's called uh, Times Illustrated History. And we're going into, uh, this is page 48 and 49. We're going to read about Babylon and Medo-Persia. This is under Babylon and Medo-Persia. These are the first two uh, uh, Gentile families that stood up and, and, and ruled. Let's 
Assyrians. Levied as tribute by 650 BC from their capital at Nineveh on the Tigris, they ruled the whole Mesopotamia, Syria and Palestine, and even extended nominally to the northern Egypt. They possessed iron technology, a well-disciplined army, and an efficient bureaucracy. So this was the Assyrians, but they didn't rule the whole world like the, like the Gentiles did, but they was one of the great uh, uh, Hamite rulers, them in Egypt, go ahead. They appeared to the Old Testament prophets at least to be invincible. And yet, for all that, Assyria was destroyed in 612 BC by a coalition of her enemies, the Babylonians and the Medes, aided by a Scythian horsemen from the steppe. Nineveh was sacked and abandoned forever after. So, that, so that's how Babylon came into, into power. They knocked down the Assyrians, and they started to, they started to uh, uh, expand their kingdom from there. But they had help from the Medes, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. After nearly 70 years of subsequent control by the Babylonians, whose most famous ruler was Nebuchadnezzar, the fertile crescent fell to Cyrus the Great in 550 to 530 BC, who united the Medes and the Persians to create the nucleus of the powerful Achaemenid Empire in modern, modern Persia. Finally, in 525 BC, his successors conquered most of Egypt too. So now these guys, they inherited the, the, the Babylonian Empire, and they expanded it even. So that was the, that's the Medo-Persian. Let's go into uh, this history book called The Last Two Million Years. Page 110. And we're going to read about the, the Greeks and the Romans here. Just to, how this thing changed hands. Go ahead and read. How Rome shaped the modern world. The Romans dominated the ancient world for almost 500 years. In the heyday of their empire, they controlled an area that extended from the Atlantic coastline of Spain in the west to the shores of Caspian Sea in the east. Mm -hmm. From the misty forests of Britain in the north to the sun-baked deserts of Egypt in the south. When they conquered the world of ancient Greece, the Romans absorbed the best of Greek culture. So and when, so when they when they conquered the world of ancient Greece, see this is, this is how Rome came into power. But but they came out of one of those areas that that uh, Greece was ruling, and they absorbed the Greek culture. So didn't that change, just the ruler change. Start that over. When they conquered the world of ancient Greece, the Romans absorbed the best of Greek culture and passed on its legacy of art, architecture, science, and philosophy mm -hmm. to the Western world. Go ahead. They added to it a typically Roman sense of discipline and respect for the law, which lies at the foundations of Western society to the present day. So now, said they disrespected the law, but they got laws that's written and laws that's unwritten. They still do today. It's, and since you don't know all these laws, because some of them are unwritten, but they're still laws, whether you know them or not, if you break that law, that, that, that's not even on the books, they can make you pay for it. They can lock you up forever. Barbarian rulers. After 455, what central government remained in Italy was for 80 years in the hands of leaders of German mercenary troops or of Germanic tribes that settled in the country and lived exploiting the docile, servile. So now, this Roman Empire, it, it didn't just cover Italy. It didn't just, it didn't just cover the, uh, Northern Africa. It covered a whole, uh, uh, a whole a vast area. Go ahead, though. The docile, servile Christian Roman population. The Vandal, Gaiseric remained in Italy only a short time. The Suvian Recimer appointed and dismissed emperors of the empire in the west for 16 years. Another general, Orestes, possibly a Roman and not a barbarian, nominated his teenage son, Rom Romulus Augustus, emperor in 475. Romulus Augustus. Romulus Augustus. 
emperor in 475. Mm -hmm. In the following year, Odacer, leader of Motley, collection of mercenaries, mainly Herulians, deposed Romulus, Romulus Augustus, nickname the, Augustulus. Deposed meaning that they, they, they knocked him down, took him out of power. So this guy, Odosir, he set Romulus Augustus down, and he appointed his son, right? Go ahead. Nicknamed Augustulus after having defeated and killed Orestus. The year 476 is generally accepted as marking the end of the Roman state in Italy. So that is what they call the end of the Roman state, but that was not the end of the Roman state. That, that was just the end of the Roman state as it had been known. Go ahead and read. That was it. That was it? Mm -hmm. So now, let's go into, uh, back to Daniel's second chapter. And we're going we gonna to pick it back up at this, 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 uh, this fourth kingdom or this, this fourth beast. So this is Daniel 2 and uh, verse, uh, verse 40. Two and 40, go ahead and read. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Mm -hmm. And where is thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with murray clay. So it said this kingdom, since it's, a, it's, a, it's the fourth kingdom, but it's not, as, it's not as, as strong as the first, second, and third kingdom. It said, look, it, it, it's mixed with iron and clay. But... In the days of these kings, is the Lord the Lord of heaven going to set up his kingdom? Did you, did you finish that? Mm -mm. Go ahead. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Mm -hmm. And where is thou sawest iron mixed with murray clay? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Go ahead. And in, the day, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So the kingdom of the Lord is going to stand forever. But so in the days of these kings, these kings that we're under right now, we're going we're gonna to get to that because this, this European economic community is the kings that, that it's talking about here. Let's go into Daniel the seventh chapter. Pick up at verse 1, Daniel 7 and 1. Seven and 1, go ahead. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Mm -hmm. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. <clears throat> Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Mm -hmm. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. So this is, this is the Babylonian empire. So we read in the second chapter that he, that he was the head of gold, but in, in, in beast form, this is this eagle with great with great wings. Go ahead and read. And was given, and the man's heart was given to it. Mm -hmm. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. So this is the Medo-Persian Empire. Go ahead and finish that. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. So now, they was exceeding power. But we're going we to skip down to verse 17 real quick, read that, and then we're going to skip back up. Go ahead. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. So now, I want to make that plain that these are kings that shall arise out of the earth. 
But this was in Daniel's day, so he was still under the Babylonian Empire. That's why I said, shall rise out of the earth. Did you finish that verse? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back to, uh, well, go back to verse 4. Go ahead. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. Mm -hmm. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Go ahead. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads. Now this leopard it re represents the Greek empire, and the, the reason why I said it had four wings, because we read, we read again in chapter 2 that it said it touched not the ground. When it was called as he go, it touched not the ground, but it said it had four heads. These represent uh, Alexander's four generals. Go ahead and read. And dominion was given to it. Mm -hmm. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Said, look, this one had ten horns. Said, it was a terrible and dreadful beast. And it was different from all them other beasts, because all them other beasts, they just ruled with, with physical power, military power. But this beast, it's going to rule with military power. But then, after you get knocked down by the military power, it's going to destroy you mentally or spiritually. It's going to, they, they want to break your will so tough that you'll forget all about the true and living God just to save your life. They are going to make it so that you don't have anything to do with God. Anything. I've been trying to hold on. Been trying to be strong. Been trying to.